experiences. Um, and I guess before um, we kind of officially start, I'll just do a few housekeeping. One is that we have enabled closed captioning. So if you would like to turn that feature on on Zoom, you can follow along um, for accessibility purposes. Uh, closed captioning is enabled. Two, um, we have a Q&A um, chat. And so please put in your questions that you may have in there, and then we will answer it a, a lot as we go along um, through the chat function, but also um, we have time dedicated at the end for Q&A. So um, Fazia and Zen will be online. So any questions that you may have to either of them or to Simone and I, who are part of the program team at REACH, will be happy to answer your calls. Okay, so I see lots of people now um, on, coming on and we'll, we'll get started because of time and wanting to make sure we have sufficient time to cover all of the topics here. So good afternoon. My name is Moni. I'm the Senior Research Officer here at the REACH Alliance. So today's agenda, we're going to cover kind of what is the REACH experience? What are kind of the history of REACH and, and what does it look like in terms of the components of the program. And then we've got two students here that will share their current researcher experience um, and how they're linking their um, fields of studies to what they're contributing to reach and vice versa. And then we'll kind of get into the technical aspects of the application process um, and then have a time for Q&A. So I will start off um, my uh, process in terms of what is the reach um, Alliance um, experience. So it, our history is that we were founded in 2015 at the University of Toronto um, in, and with support from the MasterCard Center for Inclusive Growth. We are inspired by the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and it really was um, a project that started by a political science professor, Professor Joe Wong, who's now the VP of International, in which he was looking at a successful um, cash transfer program in Brazil, and then taking some students there, um, and then presenting their studies um, to a very high stake uh, audience, and realizing that students have a lot to contribute in this space. And as um, this MasterCard Center for Inclusive Growth had heard about um, the research program, we're really in support of the kinds of skills um, that students were um, gener building through REACH, but also the kinds of knowledge that was also being generated in terms of advancing the sustainable development goals. So that, that's the origins of where we are. We're now a, a global alliance. Um, you'll see the scope of the, our alliance spans from various countries across the continents. Um, and so now we've got a whole community of researchers that are looking at how do we reach the hardest to reach. So one thing that really differentiates REACH is that we are student-driven, faculty-mentored research. And for those that kind of know the traditional research stream, it really is um, traditionally, if you do an RA ship, um, there's a faculty that is leading the program, that is developing the research, and students come and support that project. But at REACH, we really are um, putting the students in the driver's seat. They're the ones driving the process. No one is there telling them what to do. They are developing their own milestones, their own timelines, and designing the research from start to end. R Faculties play a mentorship role, an advisory role, of course. And then there's a professional coach that supports the team building and dynamics part of it. So we really are looking at investigating what are the innovations that's reaching the hardest to reach. We know that there's already a lot of great work being done on the ground, but we really want to garner the insights um, and understand how and why these innovations are reaching the hardest to reach so that we can then um, be able to support uh, policymakers and practitioners with the knowledge that they need in order to um, grow the impact of their work. So part of what's exciting is that a lot of the REACH research is um, relevant to many stakeholders and that it's been featured in um, large publications and as well as far-reaching um, op-eds and different media outlets. So there is high impact in terms of um, the uptake and dissemination of the work. 
In terms of um, overview, so there's now a community of over uh, close to 140 researchers from around the world that have been part of REACH in the last five years. Our vision is to really investigate how to get important stuff to everyone everywhere. Our mission is really to um, pursue the full achievement of the SDGs. And the way that we do that is by equipping um, students um, to be the global leaders, to create the knowledge that will inspire action. And so we do that by making sure that we're uncovering programs that are reaching the hardest to reach, that we're producing really actionable uh, insights that can be used, and that the students are receiving the training and skills to be able to then pursue um, and tackle global uh, pressing challenges. And so we have published over 40 case studies and there are now eight universities that are part of our alliance. And in the next slide, you'll see that our um, research is really far reaching um, across the globe. So the institutions, the black dots are actually where um, there are universities around the world um, from the UK, uh, Africa, um, and as well as Asia and Australia that are part of our alliance and they have local teams of students in their communities doing research on similar topics. And then uh, and the spread of the case studies you'll see is in the dark green um, are where we've already published case studies in those areas and then the SDG um, sectors. So you can see it is far reaching and there's still a lot more research to be done because there's countries that we have yet to um, really investigate as well. In our next slide, you'll see that um, not only do we want to recruit students that are from various um, sectors and disciplines, but we also want to recruit faculty who are also representing that expertise. So this slide is really to show you that we've got faculty from engineering to geography, public health, social work, the, uh, information, um, health studies, and a political scientist on board. And so all of these mentors across the U of T are um, working with the teams in order to provide their expertise and guidance uh, for the teams. And equity, diversity, and inclusion are an important part of how we do the work and why we do the work. And so we have developed a charter that was uh, inclusive of um, the U of T's Anti-Racism and Cultural Diversity Office, as well as a REACH alumni and REACH researchers and faculty, and which we came together as a community and developed principles. So please make sure to read that. Um, it, it, it is a charter that we refer to often and we measure ourselves um, and a lot of the work that we do from our recruitment process all the way up to how we um, iterate in terms of programming and case study selection is informed by. So our program really is 12 to 16 months and we will begin in the summer term. Faculties come together and they are part of the process of selecting the case studies. Um, and then students uh, go from doing secondary desk research to then conducting primary research where they go into the field, collect the data and then produce a case study report. And then for those students that want to continue on and disseminate the information, they will create different knowledge translation deliverables um, as they see fit. So the first pillar of our uh, REACH program is the performance coaching. So this is a unique aspect. As, as you know, we are um, recruiting students from all different disciplines. Everyone has a different language. Everyone has a different training, different uh, ways of doing research. And so when you bring together a really diverse set of students, um, it can be difficult to kind of find common ground and to be able to then work together quickly to accomplish a goal. So what we do is we provide support in um, hiring professional coaches that will work with you one-to-one, -one, work with the whole team, and then we're also building a community of practice. And so this um, support is really to develop individual leadership skills but also to learn how to um, really collaborate with each other, not just to do group work where you divide the work and come back, but it's actually to share the load and the, and the responsibility of a task from start to end, which is a very different process um, in terms of group work versus teamwork. Um, and the second pillar that we have is actually our skills development workshop series. We offer various workshops and training 
um, in the research field based on our faculty mentors that are here and our alumni, um, but also in professional development. So such as giving and receiving feedback. We have a, um, a TEDx coach that we hire to come and speak um, to our students about how they communicate their research and how to network. Um, and then we have a very um, curated series of career development where it's not just based on career skills of how to do a resume and how to do some of the technical part of getting um, your a job, but it's actually looking at your skills, you, looking at your passions and your experiences, and then being able to make the connections of how you want to move forward in exploring different um, career options. And our third pillar, of course, is our research process, which I've already um, outlined. And then the next slide will show you kind of the visual aspect of the REACH process. So we're right now in the recruitment phase, but then we will go into the case study selection. Um, and then once the case studies are selected, the teams are formed and then um, the teams start doing their literature review. They're looking at what defining their research question and then putting in an application to UFT research ethics. Um, and then going into the field, and that's where um, these teams are going into in the next term soon, is to be able to conduct field research. And then within that, we have large group meetings in which we bring the whole global researcher community together. So from Ghana to um, Cape Town to Tr Toronto and, and the UK, where all the researchers present their research and share about the progress. So it really becomes like a mini research conference um, online. But um, and and you'll get a chance to kind of interact and give input. And then of course, the final stage is this: the knowledge translation and impact and the case study. So these are just some of the examples of how our our researchers have been able to translate their work beyond just the case study, but to actually lift it into different mediums and different audiences that will use the research for um, for their purposes to further the the objectives of social impact. And you can find that more on our website. Um, and of course, we and part of what we also provide is we don't want just research to be sitting on a shelf or, or on a website and not picked up, but we really want to be able to provide our students the opportunity to share their research into an audience, um, not just to each other, but actually an audience with that we call insight community that involve private sector, public sector, and third sector audiences that will be able to um, take interest and dialogue with the students about their topics. So at this time, I'm going to hand over the, the mic, the virtual mic, over to uh, Zen, um, who will share about his um, experiences and motivations to do reach. All right, so happy, hello everyone. I'm really glad to be speaking here on behalf of the REACH Alliance and just introduce you to what my experience has been during, uh, in the REACH program. So just a few basic facts about me. My name is Zen. I'm an international student from Vietnam. Currently, I'm an undergraduate, so I'm in second year. I'm doing a double major in political science and economics. So roughly, these are my interests. I'm interested in theories of political economy, anything about politics and economics, especially uh, when you take uh, an approach that combines the two. I'm also interested in other subjects of so philosophy, history, uh, feminist theories, which directly relates to the topic that I'm researching, which we'll get to. And I'm also interested in, in general, just learning and writing about economics and the labor movement. So if you ever read the varsity newspaper, which is newspaper of the university, you might see my name pop up in the business and labor section once in a while. Um, so my research project, so I belong to Team Nepal. We are currently researching the Hario Ban project, which uh, in very simple term is a project that lasted for 10 years, funded by a consortium of partners, in, which include Care Nepal, WWF, mostly funded by USAID. And they focus on a region in Nepal, which is a country in Asia that is very diverse topologically and biologically and also ethnically and socially as well. The program focused on many things, mostly to do with the economic and uh, environment adaptation and also gender equality. So they have many sort of initiatives and projects within this 10 year running project. However, what we are focusing on is 
one specific aspect of Harry Obon, which is um, what is called the Community Learning and Action Centers. So we're focusing on this grassroots community organizing at the intersection between gender equality and environmental adaptation. Um, so as you may have known, there is a pro process of uh, case study pitching and choosing. So this project um, was not this project was not pitched by me. I was selected to uh, participate in Team Nepal by the Reja uh, team. And, you know, it was a very interesting experience. And what me and my coaches have been saying that there seems to be like sort of like a magic in uh, in team making. And I'm not sure how, how Moni and the team make these decisions, but it's very interesting because as a person, I might not, I'm quite introverted, uh, even though I like public speaking and researching and learning about lots of things. I'm not somebody who you would say would be extroverted and it's not like I, it's very easy for me to fit in however however um it, it just happens to be the case that me and my team work very well together and there's this very interesting synergy between us so if anyone who is wondering whether you'll fit, fit in at reach and whether uh you know if you're a little bit shy if you're a little bit unconventional i'm quite sure that the reach alliance will find people who suit you and suit your personality and who can work with you as a team very well. So that was a little sidetrack there. Um, going back to our research question, um, the research that we're looking into is the factors that influence the sustainability and the effectiveness of these grassroots groups. So we've went through obviously some literature review. Um, we got our research ethics board approved in uh, from U of T and now we are looking to get the same approval in the country, so from Nepal. Um, continuing to do our uh, desk research and then preparing for the uh, field work, which is fastly approaching by the end of May. Um, in terms of the perspective and how this connects with political science and economics, I would say for students in either of these fields, it's very important, obviously, in being a good student, you need to develop your research capacity. Right. And this is not only, you know, reading critically, reading uh, very difficult papers, but it's also being able to understand multiple perspectives. And a very interesting thing about REACH is that we're all multidisciplinary teams, right? So my teammates come from various different fields. Um, they are scientists, they are people studying health, and we combine our perspective and knowledge to look at a problem from multiple perspectives. Um, obviously, REACH has a very well-rounded program when it comes to leadership ability, and this is something that I personally have benefited from a lot, because previously to uh, joining REACH, I have a perception of leadership ability as something that is quite, sort of, you know, like very assertive, very um, extremely confident, might not be very, uh, for me, something that I might be interested in, but might not really listen to. But my experience within the REACH program has really changed what I feel or how I think about leadership ability. It, it's much more inclusive and it can be really for everyone. So it's an important skill that I think uh, students, especially in political science and economics, need to have. Uh, obviously, when you're doing research and you're going to uh, tackle these issues that are related to the UN SDG, you have to have an understanding of economic and political context, even if you're research is not directly in that field. And then lastly, having a global perspective. Obviously you are going to a, most likely a different place uh, than Canada. And within the REACH program, we have a very diverse set of researchers. So lots of international students and also people with experience um, traveling, studying, um, staying in different countries. So for example, my team, we have people from, uh, we have a student from Yemen, student from Mali, we also have a student from Canada. So being in a team where people have very diverse experience really lends you a global perspective. And these are the things that I think would really add to and really benefit somebody who's doing a political science or economics degree. So that's about it about my experience. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and I will pass the virtual mic back to uh, Moni. Thank you, Zen. Yeah, and he's generously put his email there. So be, please feel free to reach out. 
One of the things that um, I've heard from many of our current researchers is that when they were applying, they received a lot of support from current researchers. So I think um, that's the same is the passing on of that uh, generosity to others. So next up is um, our current researcher on team Rwanda and um, I'll let Fazia introduce herself and her program and her experience. All right, thank you, Moni. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming here. We all really appreciate it. Um, just a little bit about myself. I'm currently a fourth year undergrad at UTSC. I'm double majoring in molecular biology, immunology, and disease and health studies in the population health stream. <sighs> that is a mouthful. <laughs> but um, currently, my interest revolve around social impact, innovation, and entrepreneurship. So these are just my personal interests that I've gained while studying at UTSC. And I really hadn't had the opportunity to explore it until I got to reach. Uh, next, culture and culture experiences. I grew up from a multicultural perspective and I am from a multicultural background. So growing up, I've always been interested in different cultures, whether it be within the country that I'm from or other external countries or surrounding environments. Community involvement, I've always been involved in my community, whether it be volunteering or just in general going out and like trying new things and personal growth. I Ever since I started university, my main agenda has been to grow and develop myself, whether it's academically, professionally, mentally, physically, everything. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's just a little bit about me. So about my team, these are my lovely teammates, Donna, Jason, and Shake. A little bit about them. We all come from different backgrounds. Donna studying medical science, a master's degree, uh, Jason is researching HIV st stigma and overall health, and Sheikh is majoring in political, political, sorry, peace, conflict, and justice, and economics. So my team is at Ruin Sacco's initiative. So just a little bit of background, Sacco's are community-operated institutions that offer dividends, loans, and financial literacy education to the general population. And the program was launched in 2009 to help improve access to financial institutions. And it has helped a lot. It's improved financial access from 21% in 2008 all the way to 93% in 2020. However, the program is stalling a little bit in their goals of reaching 100% inclusion by 2024, and this is where we come in. So we want to know how SACOs can be improved to reach the remaining 7% by 2024, and we plan to do this through our preliminary research questions. So currently, we're investigating the incentives of private stakeholders, the barriers to implementation, unintended consequences of digitization, and the long-term sustainability of SACOs. So we believe addressing these four questions will help us answer our main interest of reaching the 7%. And yeah, that's just a little bit about our project. So onto the linkages. If anyone who's studying health studies, you've known since first year about the social determinants of health and how important it is as a researcher or just a general um, member of society. The social determinants of health, especially income and education, you know, it really sets up our, your quality of life and how your health will turn out in the future. And when you're at REACH, you get to really examine those determinants of health at a broader perspective. So you're not just learning about income and education. You're also learning about how that connects to housing, how that connects to health, how that connects to peace, whether it's mental peace, physical peace or environmental peace. And that also ties into intersectional approaches in academia and professional settings. When you join your REACH team, you're going to meet people from all walks of life. You're going to meet people who are studying in their PhDs, in their masters, or who are just first year undergrads. And that, that um, balance of different people is what's going to open your mind up to new perspectives. On top of that, as a student, whether you're pursuing a career in medicine, researching, finance, it's really important to have an intersectional approach to life because as we go on to learn, there are many different factors that play into one outcome and it's important to evaluate all of them similarly. Um, next, skill development and coaching. So REACH is very, very good 
in their skills development and coaching is actually one of my favorite parts of REACH. Uh, before REACH, I really didn't have the confidence when it came to leadership skills and public speaking because I hadn't had the opportunity to really exercise those skills of mine. But when I joined REACH, I was really able to connect with my team members through coaching and skills development to really help myself gain those qualities and really enhance it. Additionally, academic writing it's really important to find different types of academic writing, especially when you're a student, because when you're working on academic writing, there are different types of criteria that different, for example, different journals accept or different news articles accept. And it really, it's really important to gain those perspectives while you're still studying so that you have time to practice them and really hone in the skills that you need once you become, uh, once you graduate and and go into your career. So um, that's pretty much it for the linkages, but I'm really open to any more questions. So you can always email me and I will respond to you. Great, thank you, Fazia. No problem. Intersectional perspective to life. I feel like it, people on this call are getting way more out of this little info session <laughs> in terms of the wisdom you've garnered um, through Rage. Okay, so the next part here, um, we'll just go into kind of the application process, and then we'll open up the floor for questions. So we really um, want to make this interactive um, and engaging and really relevant to you. So please feel free to um, share your questions. So the number one and only eligibility that we have is you just have to be a registered student at U of T in the next academic year. So that means for next fall and winter that you need to be a registered student. Um, and that that could be at any levels of education. As you've been hearing, we really mix up all the different students and levels and disciplines here. Next is, um, so what are the traits that we're looking for? How, who would make a successful REACH researcher? And here um, we have listed on our website the kind of traits that we know from experience and as you've heard from two researchers who really have um, thought about what they want to um, develop in themselves and also the ways in which um, the REACH opportunity um, helps them build these skill sets. So we say ability to prioritize because this is a co-curricular activity. And as you saw from the, from the program, it is intense and there's a lot of work and uh, there's a lot of time involved. So if you're somebody that is struggling, you know, perhaps with your own academic program, this may not be the right time for you, but because this is alongside your academic um, you know, requirements, this is almost like the time equivalent of adding a course. So about five to 10 hours a week, and this is not in one chunk, it's like an hour to do, meet with your team, an hour to sit in a workshop, an hour to you know, work, meet with your faculty mentor and, and coach. And so there's a, a different aspects of the program, as you saw, the three, three different pillars that activities are happening all the time. So you need enough bandwidth in your schedule to um, do it. And global citizenship is part of parcel as we're looking for people that really are have an open mind and want to really learn and take a global perspective. And we say um, team player is an important piece because um, this is really, you will meet all walks of life as it's been said. And so, um, and you, this program will help you um, learn how to work in a team, not just as a group member where you divide your work and come back and put it together, but this is really about working together as a team uh, on an ongoing basis to share the load. Communication is an important part of the SDGs when we think about, you know, what we're learning and who needs to hear the message. Communication, written, verbal, are all important parts of knowledge translation. So that those are the skill sets that we're also developing in our researchers. And of course, creative thinking and strategic thinking is in research and especially global health research or global research. Um, there's always lots of different hurdles and barriers that will come. So we are looking for people that are not going to get too discouraged, but are going to get excited and learn to kind of think outside the box and persevere and, and look for creative solutions. And of course, lifelong learner is an important piece because you're coming from different perspectives. So, and you may be on a case study that you may not have very much content knowledge, but you can provide your own perspectives and your expertise. 
but you have to be willing to really want to learn either new skills or new content and new countries or new people groups. Um, there's just a lot of learning that is offered here at REACH because of the diversity. And so we really want uh, uh, someone that can take advantage of that and is excited to do that. And of course, action oriented is a key part because we're looking for student leaderships. This is an initiative that is led by students. So it's the students that get excited about making things happen. So more details on that on our website. And there is one of our questions related to that. Now, part of the uh, application is all online. There's an online form in which you can, the link is there, and you'll be asked to answer a series of short answers. This is only 250 words. Um, and part of these questions relate to kind of knowing more of your experiences. What are your background in your leadership? What are your experiences um, in terms of what leadership roles and expectations you've had? And then we're adding a question about what is your future and how does the SDGs connect with your future uh, goals? So we're wanting to really get to know you past, present and future. The required documents that you have to submit in a single PDF is your resume, your unofficial transcripts, so your grades, whatever your grades have been in the past uh, you know, year, or if you're just first year university student, you can submit your high school grades or your, your first year at U of T, you can submit whatever grades you have from the past year. And then the key thing I wanna talk about is the annotated transcript. So Fazia and Zen both had a chance to write the annotated transcript. They can share a little bit more about how they approached it. But this annotated transcript is really looking at your courses that you've, you've taken and then selecting five, um, whether it's individual or collectively, and and sharing with us what those courses um, represent or reflect you as a student or your current passions, or perhaps you wanna tell us about what you learned. Sometimes we have students that took um, something really outside of their comfort zone, uh, but they had a low grade, but what they learned from it was so much. And so they take the opportunity here at the annotated transcript to tell us that story. At REACH, we're not looking for GPA cutoff, we're looking to get to know you and who you are and what you're motivated by. And uh, the annotated transcript is a place where you can tell us. And sometimes we know that grades are not everything. Life happens and sometimes we have difficult semesters, different personal issues that happen. So our grades don't reflect everything. So this is a place that you can tell us more so that we can understand your story. So that's the annotated transcript. And then there's an activity list. It's a template that we've provided on our website. And that's just listing what you're already committed to or exploring so that we can see what activities you're already part of and how REACH fits in. So the deadline is February 12 at midnight. Um, so please make sure you submit <laughs> before midnight um, and all your uploaded PDFs. You can do it all in one sitting. You can have that link open for as long as you need, but it does need to happen in one sitting. And then you'll get, a, a I think, confirmation of your um, submitted uh, responses um, once it goes in. What happens after is by February 26, we hope to reach out to everyone that has applied and provide an answer of those that are moving forward will be invited to um, participate in interviews uh, and those will take place in March. Um, and the interview panels are with our alumni, our mentors and our staff. Um, you'll also be invited to participate in our student equity survey. This is optional and volunteer. We highly encourage everyone to um, submit their responses because it helps us to know um, who is applying and how it aligns with our recruitment process as we are really wanting to um, be open and transparent and, and really make sure that this opportunity is um, really um, offered and accessible to all students um, across U of T. And then uh, there will be an onboarding session. So those that are selected will know um, by April, early April, and then we'll have an onboarding in-person session in April. Um, and this is so that we can get students before they all go home for the summer break or for their summer jobs and internships and placements. So we've kind of um, scheduled it a bit earlier than usual so that we can accommodate. And over the summer, um, there will be virtual participation. And if there's any events, we'll be scheduling them in the evenings so that um, people who have obligations for um, 
work and placements are able to do so and still participate at REACH. So this is where we'll open up the floor for um, questions. And um, there's some common frequently asked questions here that um, have been asked and I want to um, give space. So we do have one question here. It says, is the primary research component of the project done virtually? Okay, Zen, would you like to take a, a stab at this? Yeah, so um, I know that in previous years of reach during the pandemic, primary research was done virtually, but uh, the way I understand it is that preferably it would be done in person. So you would travel, fit, like you would literally travel to the country and do field work in the country of the project that you are researching. Um, obviously, I think given ex, you know, extenuating circumstances or if traveling to the country is not advisable, then uh, online research could be an option. That's correct, yeah. So we have returned to in-person data collection. So it means what wherever your case study topic is, that's where you will be traveling because that's where the stakeholders are and that's where the information will be gathered. So we have um, returned to in-person field work. However, this is contingent on pub, um, public health regulations uh, and also Government of Canada advisories. So currently there could be different conflicts or different advisories in which uh, travel to a country is not recommended. And so we follow U of T and Government of Canada advisories. In that kind of a situation, we will then pivot to virtual um, data collection. So, um, and some are, of our ca cases are actually doing hybrid. So they're both doing in-person in the field as well as doing virtual interviews when in-person is not available. Our next question, actually, I do want to talk about um, the time commitment. Um, Fazia, can you talk about how are you managing your time from, you know, this is your final year in your undergrad, so it's a busy time. And, and then how are you managing all the different components of REACH? Can you share with us like the number of hours and how your, your time management skills? Yeah, for sure. Uh, time commitment and workload, it definitely depends on what other extracurriculars you're involved with. When I started REACH, I was only volunteering at, at one hospital, but now I have like two or three other extracurriculars mm -hmm. that I also have to manage alongside REACH. So over time, I've had to find different ways to manage and um, manage my commitment and workload. And it really helps when you communicate with your team members as well. So finding times to meet with them, it's based on everyone's availability. You might probably have a better time um, using a when to meet, which is basically a website where everyone inputs their availability and you choose a time that suits everyone, um, everyone best. And also finding time to meet with your team coach and faculty mentor as well is something that you need to consider because you also have to take into account their availability and then you also have classes <laughs> right so it's definitely um a lot but it's very manageable and doable once you put in the time and effort and plan everything out in advance so don't let things or your deliverables pile up until the last minute it's better to um address them as early as possible. So for example, if you have a major team deliverable due December 20th, don't look at it the week before. Look at it weeks in advance, plan and process out your time, you individually and your team as well. Zen, do you want to contribute to that? Sure, yeah. So with the um, time commitment, um, I, I believe in the research application, or as part of the um, um, as part of the re sorry the selection process, um, you are asked to sort of disclose other extracurricular activities, maybe other commitments that you have, and you know it's just about whether you can manage all of them and whether you you are confident and you have a plan of how to manage your time and where the priorities are. So one of the uh, qualities that is looked for in a re researcher is the ability to prioritize. So even though right, it's even though the reach experience is a big time commitment, it doesn't mean, like Fazia said, it doesn't mean that you don't have chance to do anything else, right? Obviously, you you have to manage your classes. I personally um, write for the varsity. I also have 
other commitments for clubs and also um, involved in community uh, organizing. So that is something that I'm interested in. Um, and I find time to do those activities. But at the end of the day, when it comes to reaching your deliverables, you know, when your team is in a time crunch or when you have to reach um, like a, when you have to attend a very important meeting, then I have to decide and I know that Greece will be like a priority. And so it's about sorting out your priorities very clearly before you uh, basically undertake them. That's correct. Yeah. I mean, I, what I would jump in is why we look at bandwidth is that uh, no matter how, um, you know, experienced you are as a researcher, or how many, you know, what you can really contribute in terms of expertise and content, the number one trait that really will make or break your experience as a reach researcher is going to be that you have time to be able to commit to one meeting your team. So your schedule is now connected to three other people's schedule. That's how you have to see. And that's how we communicate is that your availability, ha you need enough space in your calendar so that you can also coordinate with three other people. And so when your schedule is very packed, it makes it very hard to find time. And that becomes a real pain point. Um, if anything else is just that, is that you need to be able to find the time and availability to be able to commit. And we do expect this is a process in which it is competitive. We've got usually you have 200 applications for 20 to 30 spots. So we really want those that are, um, you know, selecting to come to reach that they know that this is uh, an opportunity that not everyone is able to get, but that those that do come will prioritize and make, make the best and maximize on the experience. One of the questions here is uh, a lot of questions related to the travel. So let me just clarify. So the, the actual research that's in person, primary research is done um, over a course of nine to 10 days in the field. So right now, um, Fazia and Zen have done a lot of work with their teams to prepare their research question, their methodology, their interview guides, and they've done their REB application. And now they're starting to plan for the field visit part, but they actually have not done primary research yet. Um, so there's the in-person, they will go into, so Fazia will go to Rwanda, Zen will go to Nepal. And when they land, they have nine days to carry out these stakeholder interviews. Um, and then come back and do the assessment. Now, if their their team has applied for hybrid interviews, that means they can schedule Zoom interviews now with people in Nepal or people in Rwanda that are part of their interview list, they can conduct primary research virtually. But so that's, it all depends on your research protocol and what, when you get that green light to do. So but for us, when we say field work, we're meaning traveling to the country uh, of, of interest from your case study to conduct research. And that's only a period of like two weeks. Um, and that travel is funded. The Reach Alliance covers um, the funding for the field work to happen. So that's flights, accommodation, meals during that research um, data collection period. And then we also um, provide the funding for the professional coaches, for um, the experts that we bring in um, for skills development workshop series. So all, so this isn't a paid research position, um, but it, there are you know, um, other ways in which we are covering the expenses to, for you to have this experience. Um, so how would international travel work with the return to in-person classes? So I think part of this is you're still attending class throughout the year. Travel only happens in the summer term. So that's the, the commitment that you that we ask researchers to be available um, for a period of two weeks in which they will coordinate with the rest of their team members um, and their faculty mentor of when that field visit can happen. So typically it happens in May. So exams are in April. And then once exams are done, we expect the teams to go into the field within May. And then the, the final um, case study um, report is submitted in June. That's the main timeline in terms of fall. In the fall term, you are writing your literature review and preparing your REB. And in the winter, you're preparing the uh, logistics. And then in the next summer is when you start going into the field and writing the case study report. 
So how long is a research term once you've been accepted? It's 12 to 16 months, as I've said. So it starts, it will start this summer, basically. As of May, uh, April, once the onboarding happens, this April, and it will be until for full cycle. Um, so I have a question here that I wanna say. What advice would you give Fazi and Zen to people that want to apply? How can they make their application stand out? Zen, do you want to go first or should I? Sure. Um, I'm trying to, to remind myself of when I last did the application. It was a while ago. So I, I guess my tips would be to really, um, I, I know this is a sticking point for a lot of people because whenever it comes to application, people are often no, it's it's hard to talk about ourselves, right? Um, so my tip would just be to really hone in on that. I know it's the most difficult part, but really look into what you have done. Think about why you're doing uh, what you're doing and especially what you want to get out of being a part of REACH and then using that to um, basically tailor your application. So for example, if let's say I wanted to join REACH because I want to have uh, an experience of knowing what the research project is like. And I also want to know what, uh, how people do things uh, and what is the research being carried out in the developmental sector, right? So I would tailor my application towards um, that desire and what I want from REACH. Uh, and also not only what I want, but also um, sort of look at my skills, my courses, right? All of the uh, main things that you would have in your resume and all relate that back to what you want to get out of reach. Yeah, my answer is pretty similar to that as well. I would say in your application, really explain the fine details. It, just like Zen said, it's really hard to talk about yourself, but you have to remember Moni and the other staff that are reading your applications, they don't know you personally. So they have to read your application. And by the end, they, by the time that they finish, they have to know who you are, what your passions are and what your goals are and what motivated you to do what you're doing today. Um, additionally, actually what I would say for me, that was the hardest part. So really start your application early. Don't start the night before. <laughs> Really start it, understand the questions, read it over so that you can have time to go back and really understand and go in depth. Um, obviously, there's an application limit, so don't write too much, but really try to get to the point and really explain your details. If you have experience volunteering, explain why you volunteer, what you gain out of it, and what you're what you gain giving to the community that you're volunteering um, towards. If you have research experience, explain why you're in that role and what you um, what motivated you to do that and what you gain out of it. So that's what I would say. Yeah, I've heard other researchers say, do some reflection, reflection of who you are and make that clear and communicating. Go ahead, Sam. Um, yeah, I believe there was a question that um, wasn't fully answered. So somebody asked, oh, they are yeah. um, currently graduating in June, mm -hmm. but is hoping to do a master's in September. So they're wondering if they are eligible. Oh, okay, yeah. So you're graduating this June and you're applying for, yes. Yeah, so if you're gonna accept, um, you're gonna be accepted into a program at U of T for the next year, you're totally eligible. For sure, that would be an incoming student. Yeah. So if it doesn't work out this year or, or you found yourself as a graduate and REACH is still around, um, totally apply. It's it's open to all graduate or, or all levels of education. And, and what I would say, and, and to be encouraged, those that are undergraduates is, as you see, we've got two stellar undergraduates, um, and we are recruiting across UFT campus. So Scarborough is a very important um, you know, group of students that are doing like there. You guys are all studying such amazing topics out there, and some of the most innovative programs are out at, at Scarborough and Mississauga. Uh, and so, we really want to involve the perspectives uh, of students across UFT and make sure that this is accessible to you. Um, now, one thing I will ask is, um, as Scarborough students, how has that been to be involved in Reach? Because Reach is part of the Monk School of uh, Global Affairs. 
um, and public policy, which is situated here at St. George. So maybe you can speak to that since this is an audience, um, hopefully, of Scarborough students um, that you can talk to about that. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, at the Scarborough campus, it, it's there's almost like a little disconnect from St. George, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially for me. I don't really know much about the campus. I remember during the onboarding process when we met downtown, it was like I was seeing downtown for the first time in my life. There were so many things, so many places that I've never seen before. And I think officially that was my first time going to the downtown campus. So it really was a new experience, but it was also refreshing in a different kind of way. Um, what I will say is do your research. You know, if you're going downtown for onboarding, pull out a map in case you get lost because I got lost quite a few times. And it's really easy to get lost. It may not seem like it, but it is. Um, additionally, you know, Monk is a really amazing school. So is, the, you know, the campus downtown. Really do your research about REACH. Make sure it fits you. Uh, I know Scarborough can, um, the environment is a little different from St. George. You know, there's less um, people on campus. And St. George, there's a lot of people. So maybe if you're a little introverted, this is a chance for you to really, you know, open the doors and just experience new things. Yeah, and I would say we've only we have so many in person events, and that's to bring everyone together. But a large majority of your um, teamwork is based on either virtual or how the team decides. So um, the there's only onboarding of certain key events that we do at St. George, but we're recognizing that students from Scarborough and Mississauga. Um, are in different places. And so having in-person meetings may not always be feasible. So Zen, can you speak to that and how your team um, handles the uh, distance? Sure, yeah. So with regard, uh, with regard to the main events where it's hosted in person, um, obviously we have to commute um, to the St. George campus. So that could be like some added time. Um, but like Moni said, those events are like, maybe three to four times a year. So um, for me, the events have been actually a pretty good chance to uh, explore the downtown campus, like Fazia said. Uh, and also there's a lot of, uh, St. George is a big campus. It has a lot to offer, um, especially if you're interested in, to be honest, it doesn't matter what you're interested in. Some, but something is probably going on at St. George. Um, I, I've told Moni about this, but I, I schedule my commute so that you know, if I if I can find some like lectures or interesting event from the university going on at that time, then maybe I'll go to reach in the morning and then attend that in the afternoon or vice versa. So you can really uh, make use of your time and take hold of the chance um, that you're commuting downtown. And then the, uh, the other thing about working throughout the distance, um, the, my team is actually so I think uh, Mariam is based in near Mississauga and also, Anna is uh, lives in Markham, so we we do find it much easier for us to work virtually. So most of our meetings are through Zoom, and our coaching is also mostly been through Zoom. But whenever we get the chance, we try to meet up. It could be um, in person downtown um, to just like have a chance to connect, see each other in person. Overall, if you uh, if you manage it well, and if and if you you regularly check in with your team, the distance shouldn't be too much of an issue. Yeah, I mean, it's a great opportunity to come and explore. And obviously we, you know, you have fellow um, researchers who can help navigate who are part of downtown. And, you know, yeah, there's a lot of things to do. Fazia, you have more to say about that? Uh, kind of similar, but I really wanted to address the last question on the slide sure. um, because I feel it's really important. So the areas of research that you can explore is vast. You know, I'm studying life science, especially um, health studies, that has nothing to do with financial inclusion. So just in case anyone was wondering um, how that came about was I actually pitched a different idea, but going through all of the case studies, you know, I really fell in love with the idea of financial inclusion. So I put that as my top choice. Um, you get to vote like somewhere around July or August, which case studies um, go forward. So if you have any interest besides what you're actually studying or majoring in, this is the perfect opportunity for you to explore that and kind of like delve into that idea to see if you really um, 
like uh, love it and want to make a career out of it. So just wanted to say that. <laughs> Yeah, and some some of uh, some of our doctorate students or graduate students who already are you know doing research, they want to do completely different. So they choose topics that are not in their comfort zone and 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 content expertise. And what I would say actually for in terms of the case study, yes, we've had a case study pinching process in which students have pitch ideas. This year we are going to change the process a bit because we've learned from um, the challenges that some of our teams have gone, and also from the feedback is that we're going to be working with community collaborators to identify case studies. Um, and But the students will still be the driver of the process and be involved in the process because we've learned that um, sometimes the buy-in and the report building and relationship building are really key uh, parts of how um, the research can be done and to be done ethically and, and also respectfully and to have impact. So we will be working with community collaborators this case study. There will still be a, an, an element of choice and there will still be an element in which um, students are driving the process, but it's going to be a slightly different process this year um, as we're learning to do more of a community participatory approach um, and, and evolving away from kind of the traditional research that has been done. So at this time, we have three minutes um, and maybe I'll just ask uh, Fazia and Zen to just say, what is the one um, thing that you've really just, that stands out and that you've really valued REACH and, um, to date? What have you enjoyed the most about REACH? I think for me, I would say, skills development and coaching and networking opportunities. Uh, before I joined REACH, um, this also will help anyone who's um, applying this year. Before I joined REACH, I didn't have any research experience. I just had strong passion for research and I wanted to really work on that and you know, get involved in a project. However, after I joined REACH and I became and I began networking with, you know, our fellow cohort, I met someone who's also a student at UTSC and they actually helped me get another research position at Master University. Um, on top of that, one of my team members, Shake, he um he's part of the Rotman Commerce program and he recently um planned a Black career conference, which I was able to attend and meet all sorts of investors, innovators, and all in the same field of interest. So this was an amazing opportunity that I really appreciate REACH for and that I'm definitely going to keep using um, during my time here. Yeah, so for me, um, the uh, connection aspect is very similar to what Fazia said. The best thing about REACH for me has been seeing people's perspectives. So that's one of the things that I wanted to get out of the reach process coming into my application. And certainly it's something that I have, um, not to say achieved because it is an ongoing process, but definitely something that I enjoyed the most. Seeing people with different perspective and how people view uh, approaches to issues reaching the hardest to reach, especially with our October conference for research, that, that's been a very, uh, important e event. And I think I learned quite a lot on where people are, how people think, and um, overall why people think the way they do. So it's very um, interesting for me. And it's uh, a chance that I don't think I would have had otherwise. Thank you. And my concluding marks would be, um, don't be scared to apply. Don't be intimidated if you're wherever you are. Um, our application and assessment process is holistic. We have multiple assessors. We've got uh, abilities to, you know, really get to know people from uh, in different ways. Um, and the, the interviews are part of the, just the discussion. It's not as formal as you think. Um, but that really at the heart of it is we want to be inclusive in that not everyone needs to have all these skills and have achieved everything. As you've heard, from Zen and Fazia, we're really looking to build the potential of those that just have not yet had the opportunities and wanna provide that opportunity and platform and the network. Um, and that once you're at REACH, we really say it's a community you'll have for life because as people move forward, um, people reach, REACH teams are still in contact years into their careers and that the opportunities to network and be part of the ongoing building of leadership 
is part of our, our, our mission. And so um, there are alumni who are part of the mentorship of new researchers. We involve our alumni in all of our processes. Um, and so the community really is one in which you will have a sense of belonging for the long term. And it's not just a one time um, kind of assignment that you get. So I really appreciate the insights that Fazia and Zen had. I, I really am thankful that we can have a more inclusive definition of leadership. We can have a more inclusive process in which all students, no matter what walks of life, can have an opportunity to really um, work on some of the greatest challenges um, to date um, that will need your perspectives and your experiences and your lived experiences that will then be able to benefit um, the larger community and, and social impact sector. So thank you so much for your time. Um, we really look forward to your applications. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Zen and Fazia. They're happy to answer questions and support your application process as well. So thank you and we'll be in touch.